Hey, beautiful friends, we are back for another fabulous interview. And today my guest is known as the human version of a sophisticated Swiss army knife. And we are going to talk about power, authority, and influence. And we're going to link this to our faith, our spiritual journeys, as well as our entrepreneurial journeys. And I think you're going to find, well, Actually, I don't know what you're going to find today because I am literally letting the Holy Spirit lead the conversation, but I think we're going to have a lot of meaning and I think you're going to learn a lot. And I think that this is going to be an episode where you may want to take notes, but also come back and listen to multiple times. Be sure after you listen to go over to the show notes, because I will be linking previous episodes that correlate to this conversation so you can go down an even deeper rabbit hole to learn, grow, and strengthen yourself as well as your business. Without further ado, Matthew, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Thank you, Robin. So good to be here. And I, I like I said, I, I love your name. It's a perfect name for a show. So thank you. <laughs> thank, you for the, thank you for the opportunity. Well, thank you. So we met through... Noemi. That's right. On LinkedIn. And you guys all link her episode in the show notes as well, because she was such a delight, but she's a, a podcast, um, agent agent. She does pitching and Mm -hmm. things like that. And she and I have been connected for a while through another mutual acquaintance. And she introduced me to Matthew and Matthew was like, Oh, I saw that post about you and I want to be on your show. And anyway, (laughs) it works out really well. So Matthew, before we dive into our conversation, I would love for you to tell the listeners just a little bit about your background and what led you to the point in your journey that you're at today, really helping other people become good leaders, better leaders, exceptional Mm -hmm. leaders, and how you are also a supportive male voice for women who are in leadership roles. Mm. Yes, well, there's a lot there. So I'm the 10th of 13 children from small town New England. Sadly, my parents have since passed. And But of the 13, I have two siblings that are adopted, which really speaks to my parents' generosity. So I grew up in an environment where where generosity was, it was just every day, be generous, help people, love, love bigger, love better. And, and that led me to make a decision to join the seminary. Seminary is a place for people who are going into ministry, receive training and education. And so there's a lot of reasons behind that, but part of it was just I because I grew up where I grew up, I wanted to do something meaningful, something impactful, something that had had an impact in time and in eternity. You know, to make a difference in a transcendental way. Because that's 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 how I grew up. That's the way we thought. We and we were taught a lot about heroism to be heroes. You know, we were taught about the saints and you know so many virtuous Christian people that went before us that showed us the way. And so that was that's how we were wired. So that's what I went. I, that's why. That's what I want to do. And there's other reasons why could, we can. Well, that's a deeper conversation around that decision. But that's where I went. And so I was in that sort of space for 30 years between training and education for 10 years, and then 20 years of ministry, which brought me to Italy. I did a lot of my education there as well. So I was in Italy for 10 years, Ireland for five, Colombia and Chile, and South America for two years each. And I was also a chaplain in the United States Navy, working with sailors and Marines. So all of that as as a Catholic priest. And then I made the decision to leave, to step away from formal ministry in 2021 and start my own practice around leadership, what I call a holistic leadership coaching, advisement and education. Because of precisely what you said, the the the, the importance of, of leadership, authority, power and influence in our human experience. So that's um, the, just a, a quick summary of who I am, where I come from and what I do now. So listeners, you know how curious I am. And of course, I spent 30 minutes basically grilling <laughs> Matthew before we started our conversation here on a, as a recording. Um, but I was so fascinated by the fact that he was a priest and then left the priesthood. If you remember back 
when the show was called the second phase podcast, I interviewed Mary Kay Meeks Hanks and she was a former nun married to a former priest. And so I interviewed her. And so I will link her episode in the show notes as well. And we're not going to really dive into that conversation today for the sake of time, but I do want to dive into the faith aspect of leadership and how we as believers have Christ in us. We have the Holy Spirit in us to guide us and lead us. And Matthew, I would love for you to talk about from that, talk about that from that perspective of holistic leadership, but also how that gives us a sense of power, authority, and influence. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when I say holistic leadership, I mean, first of all, how we lead ourselves, that's really really starts. I think some of the most challenging people to lead is is oneself, and then how I lead in my intimate circles. And usually, I'm what I mean by that is family relationships, intimate relationships, romantic relationships, and then how I lead professionally, and then how I lead in organizational contexts. There's a lot of principles that are common denominators in that, but again, context changes, and so the application of those principles changes. So that's why I call it. That's what I mean by holistic approach to leadership. And when we talk about leadership, I you know talk about authority, power, influence, and leadership. All of those because they've all those are always they've always been part of the human experience and they always will be, whether we like it or not. Now in in the newer, younger generations, there's a there's a strong rejection towards hierarchy. There's a strong rejection towards these words, power and if they can sort of have a negative connotation to them. When when we look at their roots, they're not. There's nothing negative about them. But I think the younger generations have have a rejection towards that because, for a few reasons, and we're talking about the American culture generally, but a few reasons because it's been used in, in destructive ways. Mm -hmm. And when I think when anything when we suffer some sort of destruction or trauma or hurt by something, then we ought, this is something in us that we automatically reject that. And the danger for us as human beings is, but then we throw away a lot of the good things um with the negative so there's and there's also in in american culture there's a well there's a sacredness around liberty and freedom so when we think of authority and power we see it as sort of terms that contradict each other about those are those are threats against my freedom that's not in their in their true sense of what they mean that's not true but that's what we can experience. And we've seen it in other cultures and history of how people, you know, it's it's very the easy examples are just dictators and, and regimes like that, where they use power, authority, and influence to to take away people's freedoms and to mm -hmm. hurt the dignity of, of people. You know, so and when we look at power, and I love to go back to the creation, to the creation narrative. The, the dynamic creative power of God who creates, right? And when we look at the story of creation, and there's two stories, but when we look at the story, he creates, you know, the the, the skies, the 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 sun, the the earth, the waters, the the animals in the waters and the animals on the earth. And then, then it, it all leads to then creating the human. It's such a dynamic story. And when God looks at everything, he saw that it was good. Power is that I call it the sacred. Power is sacred and it is meant to do good. It is meant to create good. And when we look at authority, which comes from a Latin word called autoritas, which someone has a sense of author, you know, someone who sort of gives birth to content. It also can mean master. But the, the, let's go back to the sense of, of, of some of autoritas, is someone who authors, is someone who, who increases, someone who enriches, someone who gives birth to something and there's nothing destructive about that now we can give maybe we can give birth to something that's negative right we can use our authority in a bad way but authority is something that's very life-giving you know and when we talk about authority we can have moral authority i think that's a term that really resonates with us and moral authority is about someone who doesn't have a necessarily a position of of authority a legal position of authority or formal position but it's because of who they are there's an integrity about them there's something that that engenders trust, respect, admiration. And so it's almost like I allow them to have power over me because of who they are. That's the, really one of the highest types of authority. Now, in an ideal world, that's what we would like. We would like someone who's in a position of moral, of, of formal and legal authority to have that moral authority. Sadly, that uh, doesn't always happen for, for a number of reasons. 
you know, so we have authority, we have power, we have influence. And really the, the simplest definition of leadership is that leadership is influence. That's not the most academic definition, but it's the most simple. And influence, again, comes from a Latin word, influo, influere, which means, and I love this, which means to pour into. You know, and when we look at the spirit, you know, again, and, and again, water is often used in, in, in our in our theology and our religious terms to talk about how God as as, an, as a symbol of God, you know, whether it be through baptism and other things and life giving, and that's the spirit. It was who pours into us. And so influence, when we think about who we're around, we are there's never a really a neutral relationship. We are always influencing. And we, it's a decision we have to make. So how do I want to how do I want to pour into those around me? Whether it be my intimate relationships, my romantic relationships, whether it be my children, and then professionally, how do I want to pour into the people that I lead? Now, more academically, leadership is it's a process, it's a dynamic process of influence of one person over others to reach a common goal. And in my terms of leadership, there's like 380 definitions of leadership. So I I also made my own, but <laughs> we won't need, we don't need to get into that now. But it also has to do with it's this mutual exchange because it's not only a leader that only doesn't influence other people. It's the followers influence. Right? The followers influence the leader. It's a mutual exchange of who we are and how we behave. And a leader's job is not only to influence, but is also to grow. I and mean, in a, in a holistic look at leadership, I want people to grow under my authority, power, and influence. And when we do that, then we're we're using all these sacred powers for good. When we use them to 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 destroy or to put people down or to not allow them to grow, those that's coming from very dark places. It comes from insecurity. It comes from just the very negative use of powers. I, I see power as something that I can control people. And that's not no, all the power, authority, in all of that is meant for good. Mm, I, I know love this. Said, I know I've said a lot of things. So I'll oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I genuinely love it because I use that phrase authority a lot, like become the authority in your niche, become the authority that people go to. And I love your definition of that and how it is good. It is, it's a way to help someone else grow. And even that term influence, I think because of social media, we think of influencers as these, you know, people who are kind of owning the online space, but there's so much more to the word influence and the power behind influence. Mm -hmm. When you look at it from the perspective of influencing other people to grow to develop to succeed and so i i love everything you just said so and i love that you brought in the story of creation i a lot of people say oh i i'm not creative i don't have a creative bone in my body but i really believe that because of who god is and what his character is we also were created to be creative and that mm. creativity leads us on, on a journey to be able to creatively bring ourselves to that place of good power, authority, and influence mm -hmm. with moral integrity. Of course. Yes. And, and we participate, you know, as human beings and as people of faith, we, we participate in that creative narrative. When just, just look at parents, you create human beings right with with the help of god but just among yourselves you know, through the intimate sexual through sexual intimacy which is such a beautiful and powerful and just think of the power of sexual intimacy and then the other creative you know we're human beings so we are and god created everything but then we participate in that creation and in taking care of creation but in also improving creation or or not improving it right? we, we can also hurt creation but yes, whether it be art, you know, everything that's beautiful, everything that's good, everything that's true, right? And we're meant to use all of those abilities that we, those creative abilities that we have to to add to beauty, to add to goodness, to add to truth. Mm -hmm. So it's powerful. And in the greatest, when we talk about God, you know, we talked about the narrative of creation, but then it's also, you know, in scripture, we talk, they define God, God is love. And really, that's and we participate in that as well. One of the greatest powers that we have as human beings is 
is to be able to love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you mentioned something, Matthew, about um, power being misused. And when we talk about like dictators and mm -hmm. um, over the course of history, there have been people in churches who have used their power inappropriately. Um, obviously people not of faith have used their power inappropriately to damage other people, take control of other people, hurt other people. But, and you mentioned the word like doubt. And I think that we can, we can preface this, that these people who do misuse power, authority, and influence are coming from a place of lack of scarcity, of doubt, of fear, of greed. And I think it's important to note that we are all subject to any of those things at any point in time because of Satan and his mm -hmm. desire to distract us. And he uses those things to distract us so that we're not as focused on our purpose, what God has called us for, what God wants for us. And we talked about this a little bit before about that big picture of what God wants. Mm -hmm. And of course he wants us to obey him. I mean, he created us and loves us and he wants us in his fold, but what else, what else is included in that big picture of what God wants? <laughs> oh boy. The, and there, as, I just want to, highlight what you said about there's some traps that we have as human beings we have to be right and we can all we're all prone to fall into them mm -hmm. you know whether it be fame whether it be money whether it be power you know and and whether it be pleasure that these are all things that can can distort us because of how we are as human beings and, and none of us can say far be it from me how many of us have been in that place in our life? Of, oh, far be it from me. And then all of a sudden, a few years down the road, we find ourselves in that position. Yeah. Right? Oh, snap. <laughs> yeah. So it's so humbling. And, and and humbling is so important because it means to be grounded, to live in the truth, right? And to experience that. So the, but going back to what you said, the, the, what's the the bigger picture of what God wants? And I, I want to say that when we, you know, power, authority, influence, all that is, when it's not used properly in the uh, the environment of faith and family, the destruction touches the deeper fibers of the human person. Why? Because family touches the deeper fibers of who we are as humans, and our faith touches the deeper fibers of who we are. You know, if we experience dysfunctional or poor or toxic leadership in a corporate environment, it affects us. But we can distance ourselves from it. We have other spaces. But when it in family and when it's in faith, because it has because in faith in that environment it has to do with my relationship with with the divine, which is such an intimate thing. And when people use that power over us in an inappropriate way, um, it not only affects us as human beings, but it affects my relationship with the divine. And that's that's a huge responsibility that faith leaders have and that parents have. So in the, the bigger picture about this is, is to use is that you know we want to play attention to those traps. So I mentioned them because they're they're there, as we're talking the, the evil spirit is there to to sow doubt into that these that these other traps that we have that they sort of make their way very subtly into our life. I don't think oftentimes that the, the devil, the evil spirit wants us, or the enemy of the soul, as I call it, wants us, oftentimes doesn't want us to do bad, but oftentimes wants us at least not to do good mm -hmm. and to, or sort of to, to begin to distort things so that we think we're doing, we think we're doing, we're doing good or we're sort of serving those traps, but in a very unconscious way. Mm -hmm. you know, unaware they create a lot of unawareness mm -hmm. they bring us away from christ who should be course. the center of our heart of and mind soul right. yeah but we often don't want to you know none of us want to feel like we're we're consciously doing something bad but we sort of we rationalize it we 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 play with it with words and we try to make it well it's it's okay it's not that <laughs> i could be doing worse and 
and that's and the evil spirits right because that's that distances us from who we are from where we're going from god and it it really makes us a bit numb to the things of the spirit and as long as the devil or the evil spirit can achieve our numbness well he is pretty can be pretty content with that so in the bigger picture we want to always in this keeping ourselves in line we want to use power we want to use influence we want to use authority for for good as we already said so we want to pay attention to those traps. We want to use this for good. And when, if we're parents, you know, or in an intimate relationship with, with my spouse, we want to keep these things in. How am I using my power, my influence in my relationship to, to help my spouse grow? And when we're in an authority in places of faith, how am I using this this sacred position of power and authority that I have over a community? to help my people, to help my people grow. And how am I, it's so important to keep ourselves in check that we're not serving our own personal agenda because it's about serving God's agenda, what God wants. And that's about the, the bigger picture is, in the big picture, what does God want for us? And again, God wants happiness. He wants peace. Essentially, he wants us, he wants us to be with him forever and eternally in heaven. That's the big picture. All of these other things are instruments, are means to get there. Oftentimes in environments of family, but especially in environments of faith, we can get caught up in these instruments, these paths. And, and we make the path the end. Mm -hmm. And that then that then that can create a lot of weight on people. And it, it can distort really. It can, I suppose it could sometimes distort their journeys, or it can can blind them from what the bigger picture is. And then we get caught up in focusing on the means rather than on the end. Mm -hmm. That's something I, we naturally do as human beings. So we just have to be careful. Yeah. And what you're reminding me of is that we put a lot of emphasis on success because mm -hmm. we're told we follow this path and we become successful and we make money and we you know, can do whatever we want when we have enough money. And we put our identity into that level of success, mm -hmm. achievement. And I think it's really important to go back to what is the bigger picture of what God wants. And he wants us to recognize our identity in him as cherished, loved, redeemed, forgiven, all of those things mm. that are so much more powerful than actually a path we're taking that we think defines us. Yes. No, but, but that's, and that's saying, thank you for highlighting it. That's the bigger picture of, of our identity. But as human beings, again, there's these traps of, and identity is a huge thing for us as human beings. But yes, we can get caught up that the means to the end becomes my identity, whether it be a position, whether it be money, whether it be certain successes. You know, and I think sometimes we're, the faith environment oftentimes doesn't serve us well when this is because there's sort of a disconnect or what may seem as a contradiction is we're meant to be holy and virtuous. And that's sort of what we emulate. But the faith message is also, well, but we're also injured. We're hurt. We're sinners, you know? And so we emulate this and then we condemn that. But the fact is, well, this is, <laughs> this is very much our identity is that we, Yes, we, we are sons and daughters, but we're also sinners. Mm -hmm. And when we sort of forget that, you know, again, the church ends up being a place where we where we give prizes to the virtuous or what may seem or what, who may consider themselves righteous and where those who need mercy, compassion, those who recognize their sinfulness may feel rejected. And that's not what faith is about. If we really firmly believe that that we are, whatever you want to use, you know, through original sin, or through, that we are injured, that we are hurt, that there's something distorted about us that, that needs redemption and salvation, well, then we have, that's where we need to meet people, and that they're on they're on a journey. Mm -hmm. I sort of went off topic there, but no, but I I like it because I think as as entrepreneurs, especially, I mean, you're in the coaching industry, I'm in the coaching industry, and I think. As coaches, we are given an opportunity to guide and help other people grow. And it's really important, I think, for us to recognize not only who our identity in Christ, but our client's identity in Christ and give them the opportunity to, to grow and be curious about 
them and their journey and what mm -hmm. they need versus judging where they're at, what their goals are, or what has brought them to this part of their journey, mm -hmm. if it is something that has been traumatic or they've made bad decisions. It's not our place to judge. It's our place to get curious and then be able to help them mm -hmm. grow and bring forth the gifts of the spirit to share with them yes. that we have inside of us. And I think that's what people find so life-giving about coaching you know, or yeah. some relationship like that where they can show up without masks we all have you know we bring masks to different or facades to different uh, scenarios or contexts of life but when we can show up as who we are right and not be judged and really be embraced in who we are and this would have been my experience also in the confessional you know it's such an important sacred place where we want people to be to take off the mask and and rather than be, there being an ugliness in that there's a great beauty I, I I admire and I love and, and people and I respect them so much more, whether it be after they walked out of the confessional or whether it be after a coaching session. Because we, we're able to, we have a window into the beauty of the human person in their mm -hmm. truth and in their reality. And I think so what people find so life-giving about coaching is that ability to be creative. It's a very creative space where I feel accepted, I'm not judged, and where I can sort of think outside the box mm -hmm. about my purpose, my meaning. And, and in the bigger picture, how to I find my identity in God and in Christ mm -hmm. and to live according to that in a new yeah. creative way. Yeah. I love it. Um, okay. So Matthew, what, <laughs> what does holy mean? And I, you know, we're talking to an audience of entrepreneurs, small business owners, um, who are Christian, who have faith and most of them. Um, not everyone, which is fine. I welcome everyone here. But <laughs> what does that mean, actually? Yes. You know what? And thank you for that. Because that, that's a topic that I, I thought of for many years, whether it be through my formation and training. Because there's always there was this focus a lot on being holy, being holy, being holy. And I think in, in a lot of Christian and faith-based worlds, we we there can be this, you, you know, you have to be as if it was our own achievement. That's something that we have to achieve. And so when I did my master's in spiritual theology, the my dissertation, I said, well, I want to write about holiness because this is something that I've been sort of chewing on for years and I want to try to make sense of it. So I, holiness, obviously, is participation in God, but there's three steps to this, and I'll say it very simply. Holiness, it's a gift from God. It's something, it's God who wants to give. It's we who want to receive and then how we cultivate that gift throughout our lives. Now, we could go into a lot of ways, how do we cultivate that? But it, there's three movements. God, really, it, and that's where it starts. It's not something I achieve, but it's something that I, I definitely have to be open open myself to. And there's a lot that we could talk about there. But God who gives, so, and then we who open ourselves up to the gift, and then how we cultivate that gift. And I suppose if we think about it, you know, I mean, it just made me think of it now. So just the whole fact of of human generation and sexual intimacy, it has those same movements, mm -hmm. right? Of someone who gives, whether in this case it will be the male, the female who receives, and then 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 this cultivation of life in your womb mm -hmm. that then is born, which we could turn as our, as our birth into heaven. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh gosh. That's, well, that's, so, uh, that that would be my simple explanation of holiness. So it's it's about God. It's not about yeah. us. Yeah. Which I think we so often because we're so inundated. And again, it's you know my whole emphasis is success without social media because I feel like it's such a distraction. And at least for me, and maybe everybody else out there is stronger than I am, but. <laughs> It is such a trap of comparison, doubt, fear, all those things that Satan plants in us to distract us from God and our identity in him and who we are called to be, mm -hmm. which, you know, we, we take so much on ourselves to achieve and, and, and to be powerful and to be, have an authority and, and to be an influencer when really 
if we let all those distractions go and we just focus on that direct line between God and us, we can achieve all those things that we want to achieve that he's placed on our heart to want to achieve. Yes, of course we can. It's neither either or, but it's, we, we struggle as human beings with integrating things and reconciling things in our life. You know, so we talk yes. about the media, we talk about then our spiritual life, both can have their place, but obviously by your point, I think is if social media or all this other noise, if it inundates my spiritual life, what is really, what is most important around my identity, my relationship with my intimate circle and my relationship with God and where I'm going. Well, then we, if, yeah, we definitely have to pay that. We don't want that to inundate, right. Or to yeah. become a destructive force. I think in social media, two things. One, we can learn a lot from people. Now comparison, yeah. there's one thing is comparison, which is, can be very negative, but the other thing is also just learning. We can learn from people, yeah. but it's also a platform where we can do a lot of good as what you try to do. I try to do by putting things out there that there's so many hungry people that they, they will consume something that's healthy for their spirit. Yes. But we also have to take care. No, but there's a very addictive element. We, and we, we don't need to beat around the bush around, around social media, you know, and then, and then there's, there's definitely this element of comparison and, and where, when you are connected online, all stuff, you can feel rather than feeling encouraged, you can kind of get down on yourself by, by seeing all these other things, because there's a lot of facades that everything's a facade, mm-hmm. but it's just discernment is so important and to be yes. able to, to choose and to decide appropriately according to the bigger picture. And I, yeah. and I know your audience is women. So in, 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 I, I just, women, there's so much I could talk about. And I know we just have a few minutes left, but you know, when I talk about women and we talk about creation, women is the female is the crown of creation. You know, and man was created from the earth according to the biblical narration. And, and then a woman is created from something more dignified than the earth. Right. And because, and so the power, female power, just the, the power of women in creation is is just so is so important. And in humanity, when we think of of what a mother is, you know, and so the if, I think that women are put under a lot of a lot of social pressure. The feminist movement did a lot of good, but it also put women in a place of where they felt like they had to overcompensate for so many things for their identity. And and in the end, the one who loses. The one who is lost in that feminist movement is also women, and and when women, you know, when women are displaced from that female dignity, it automatically affects us as men. We automatically lose our place, and so that's that's why there's so much just confusion around, around gender, around and not only about, about roles, but around there's a lot of social confusion around all of this, and it's mm-hmm. a, and again we could say it's from the evil spirit, whatever, just to, to create chaos. Mm-hmm. and it's all everyone's trying to look for good but it, there's a lot of chaos that's happened and so i want to just want to really encourage women to women i have this power and this dignity that we as men need and and not to throw that away for the sake of of what they might call feminism or not throw that away because you think you have to be different no. I mean, what's the most sacred role in, in humanity is the mother. And so anyways, I just think there's a lot of overcompensation that can happen and with women. And then they're put under all this pressure. And then there's a lot of comparison right, where they have to do all these things. And, and the other sad consequence of this is that motherhood is unconsciously has become seen as a second or third like, category. And I go back to to what I just said before. Mothering, whether you do it physically or in so many other ways, is the most important thing that a human being can do. We as men, we participate in that partly. And we try to, we have to, our job is to also support women, not to drag them down and not to hurt them, but to build them up. And to remember that that's the most, to mother, whether it be physically, whether it be those around us, to nurture Yes, and to be executive and to drive and to produce and to create and all those other things. Yes. But motherhood, we would not exist without motherhood. And it's the most powerful and most beautiful thing that a woman can do. Mm, I love that. And I like that you said, we don't only mother children that we have birthed, we mother in many different ways. And I think as entrepreneurs, as coaches, Mm -hmm. 
we're mothering so many other people and fostering growth in so many ways that can be considered that motherhood. Like it doesn't have to be defined as, I mean, yes, I, as a mom, that's so sacred to me. Of course. Um, but I, I don't want to exclude anyone who's not necessarily an earthly mom, but I want to point out that we are mothers in so many different ways as women. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And to, em- to embrace that, I think it's, I think it truly is such a gift and we have that opportunity. We we're, we're going full circle here with, um, you know, back to power and authority and influence where in that role of mother, whether it be a client or, um, a team or truly your children, it is influencing through the gifts that we've been given. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I want to encourage women to, to protect those gifts, to capitalize, to potentialize, to grow those gifts because the, we need them. Men need them. The world needs them. Yeah. And, and again, and go back to even for circle, you talked about you had a, a former nun on the program. And when we think of I mean, some of the most beautiful people that I've seen are whether it be consecrated women or nuns, right? And they, even in those in those spaces, they call them mother. You know, a, mm-hmm. mo- a movie mm-hmm. just came out about Mother Cabrini. Yes. Right. And so, which is an incredible figure. But these these women or Mother Teresa or other you know, women that maybe that you know they never married, they never had physical children, but how much okay. nurturing and transformation did they cause in the world because of their femininity? Yeah. And Matthew, it, you're right. We are, we do need to wrap up. Um, but what you just said brought me to something because um, with every, and and someone has asked me this before, you know, well, why in the world did God put a tr- the tree of good and evil in the garden if they weren't supposed to eat from it? And I just recently heard this explanation of, of the polarity of good, and bad. Um, if, if there's something good, there's going to be something bad. If there's something bad, there's got, there's got to be something good on the opposite side of that. And I think so, and we weren't even going to go into this conversation, but it just, I felt prompted to do it. But when you were talking about like the mothers, the nuns, the, you know, Mm. and these people, and we see such incredible examples like mother Teresa, just the purity of heart that she had, the, the sacrifice that, Mm -hmm. that she made. But then you hear these stories of people who have abused children or abused other people within the confines of a religious organization. Uh Mm -hmm. Most, more specifically recently, we've heard a lot of it in the Catholic church, but I know of many other denominations that have experienced the same thing. It is not the organization. It is not the organization as an entirety that is bad. It's people Mm -hmm. have made bad choices. They have succumbed to Satan's temptations. They have let him distract them and evil because we live in a world where evil exists, that evil has overtaken them and they've done really evil things. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's, Uh, But so many people have fallen away from their faith because of these things, whether it happened to them or someone they know or no one they know, they just feel like religious organizations are bad. And I, I, I know this is a whole conversation in and of (laughs) itself, so we're not going to dive deep into it, but I would love just for you to acknowledge that, um, peace can be found there. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. There, there is so much there, right? And and again, when we talk about powers, there's, you know, we talk about the positive power, but there's always, there's the power of pride. Pride is a very powerful thing in us as human beings. And I'm here, I'm referring to the negative sense of, of pride, um, mm-hmm. chastisement, punishment, guilt, shame. These are all powers that we can use and that can be used very much in faith-based organizations. Right? And then the, the power of, of the sexual powers, which are meant for so much beauty and intimacy which can also be used for ill, right? And that's what you're referring to, whether it be, you know, whether it be the sexual, you know, we can talk about priests, we can, you know, in all of this, we, in all the different organizations, like you said, there's, there's a misuse of, of power. And, and when I work with fem, with feminine or female organizations like nuns, right, there would, they struggle a lot with 
other aspects of of psychological power, spiritual power, abuse of those powers, not necessarily of the of the sexual side, but uh, how it can be abused in other ways. And so there's I went off track, but what what was your what was your question again? Well, I guess what I was I guess what what I was trying to emphasize is that all these bad things happen, but there is that polarity yes. of good and bad. But mm-hmm. it's not because bad things happen. It doesn't. It's not an, and this isn't the right word, so forgive me, um, but it's not an excuse to leave the faith. Mm-hmm. I, like, me- yeah, I remember your question now. Yeah. And I can relate also to myself. Um, is my, I have the ability to, you know, I, I continue to practice my faith, but I, I also experience a lot of negative things in the name of God, in the name of faith, in the name of religion. I consider myself fortunate to be able to differentiate between the the bigger picture or the organization, the the the, the church, and what are the people in the church or the mentality or the culture, all that. I also understand that people have a hard time doing that. Mm-hmm. And I think just because I was so immersed in it, I, I have that ability, but it's very hard for people to because we link people in leadership roles, whether it be pastors or priests or nuns or other people, we, we, we link them to a direct re- representative of God. I'm not sure if that really serves us well <laughs> as human beings. So I, I would be cautious about doing that. But that's generally what's happened. And so when people experience hurt in any way from that figure, they automatically, the natural reaction is I reject everything about that. Mm-hmm. And but it, it can also be an easy excuse, you know. I saw that I didn't like it, so I'm gonna go just step away from organized religion. There's all certain comfort about that as well, because organized religion is it's structured. It's uh, there's discipline to it. There's a there's a journey. There's a community. There's accountability. And as human, <laughs> that can be hard for us as human beings. So we want to be very careful, okay? Because again, there's a very there's a very subtle attempts from the evil spirit to draw us away from things that are good and so it just i think to, to what you were saying is that yes we can find i know so many people that are so faith-filled and so and practice their faith and they, and but they're also able to identify so many negative things about organized religion but they don't let that blind or negate or get in the way or eclipse the practice of their faith and they continue to do it they're just able to keep things in their lane mm-hmm. it can be hard for us to do this as human beings because faith is so intimate to us that it, mm-hmm. it like i said it involves our whole being but it can be done but it's a journey and that's why i think some people need to step away and we, we have to be very supportive and respectful of people who you know i'm just stepping away from organized religion or from my church for a while because there's a lot of things i have to reconcile it, it's a mm-hmm. journey yeah and I think as we as we as we look at that, it's we have to remember again our identity in Christ, but also he wants a relationship with us. So even though the evil spirits came or you know, there was destruction or chaos in an organization, our hearts, our souls are meant to be in relationship with God, not solely ourselves. Yes, that's right. And it's, it's a lifelong journey to do that, to achieve that. And sometimes we go through these chapters where we have to step away. We go through crisis. We go through moments of making these decisions of reconciling things. But I want to step back to where we, sort of where we started is, again, people in those in positions of authority and power in religious organizations they have to be so cog- cognizant of the sacredness of the power that they wield and to do so with great caution because what may end up happening is that we end up causing the direct opposite of what we are meant to do. We're supposed to bring people closer to God. And oftentimes we can cause the opposite where people lose their faith. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is very tragic and contradictory to what faith is about. Mm -hmm. Matthew Brackett. Thank you. This was an incredible conversation. Thank you, Robin. How can the listeners connect with you, learn more from you, even work with you? 
Well, bracketalliance.com is my website. They can find me on all social, most social media platforms, even though we don't like to talk about that. <laughs> it's okay. I get on there too. I'm just right, saying right it isn't yes. the end all be all of growing your business and being successful. Of course if not. If it isn't nope. healthy for your soul, <laughs> then feel free to walk away. Right. <laughs> so Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, Matthew Brackett or Matthew Brackett official Instagram as well. So look me up. You can see I have a YouTube page as well. You can you can look me up, see some of my content, reach out to me. And there's different ways that we can work together. I can support you or organizations. Wonderful. Listeners, thank you. Thank, yes, absolutely. Thank you. And listeners, thank you for being here. I know this was a long one, but as I said at the beginning, I, I knew the Holy Spirit was going to bring this conversation full circle and that it was all going to have meaning and that it would be something that you could take away. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you know anyone who could use the inspiration shared today, please share the episode with them as well. All right. I love you all. And I will see you all here next time.